All right, we are talking about Willow, season one, episode three. Um, it's funny because my Disney Plus uh, does not work, even though oh. I pay for it. I was, but I was able to procure a copy uh, in the high seas in order to do the review. That's ridiculous that it's not working for you. They must know you're 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 using it. I'm, I pay for it. I don't even think this is like wrong. <laughs> I think this is like a means <laughs> I don't to think an end. I'm doing anything wrong, right? Yeah, I'm at the point where I just think this is the means of an end. Anyways, this is Willow episode three. Um, <clears throat> so first thoughts, Shane, on this. Uh, I actually like this episode. Okay. I have a feeling that you I didn't like as much as I did. Well, uh, you know, here's the thing is like the, the, the end credit music explained everything you need to know about. Oh. Willow. The end credit music tells you who this show is made for. Right. Yeah. It is not made for us. And it might be an entertaining show and it might have some uh, interesting story and there's things happening, but it's definitely not made for fans of the original Willow movie <clears throat> because you don't Britney Spears Metallica or it's not even Britney Spears. It's somebody newer than that. And Britney Spears is old now. <clears throat> Who's a new artist that's that doesn't sound very good that that does only cover songs. <laughs> Do you know somebody right now? There's that's, a that's, lot. I don't know what. <laughs> Give me the name of one person that's remotely famous that's like Miley Cyrus does that. She I mean, does she a lot, of, co she does a lot of cover songs from like old hair band stuff. Okay, yeah. So that's like Miley Cyrus singing Metallica Enter Sandman <laughs> for the end credits. And I'm like, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> that's that's what my kids are listening to. They're listening <laughs> to weird crap like that. That's like older. And it's so it just told me like this show is not for us. Like they had to pay. Here's what's crazy: they had to pay Metallica to play that song in the credits. <laughs> right, right. But they didn't use Metallica's music. No, no, they didn't. <laughs> so it's like, well, it says everything you need to know. And when the characters, I don't know if when the characters, especially the 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 young younger people, uh, when they talk, um, they don't even it's pull me completely out of the fantasy. And I just feel like the language and everything is just very aimed at my kids. And uh, while there's some really interesting things happening. It has a hard time getting me excited about watching it, if that makes sense. Yeah, <clears throat> no, that makes complete sense. Um, they all they do they do talk like it's a CW drama. Um, <clears throat> also, like their general disdain for anyone that's slightly older than them is so odd to me. Right. What is it about these characters, especially the young characters? where it feels to me almost like like some people speak with a British accent and some people don't, right? They're all right. like from the same place, but they all speak like different accents. <laughs> right. And then it, it feels to me like like these kids came out like they were zapped out of Southern California and zapped into Willow and like, <laughs> just keep talking. You know, I think at one point, Alora, Alora says something like, uh, um, I'm going to kick your ass or something like that. And I'm like, what is that? Is that? Is that how it would have been said in Willow? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> you know, it was just weird. So anyways. <laughs> LOL, Borbin. I'm going to twerk on that. Don't <laughs> suss me out, bro. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like that bad, but like, but yes, it feels like we're one step away from that type of language. And uh, there are some interesting things that happen, but overall the episode, it's like watchable, but I'm not looking forward to next week's episode, even though I will probably watch it. Is that fair? <laughs> You're definitely going to watch it. <laughs> well, I got to watch it so we can talk about it. But and I mean, here's like, the, here's the deal, Shane. You forced me to watch the entire season of Rings of Power. I did. Yeah. I'm sorry. And this, at very, at the very least, this is better than Rings of Power. So it is better than Rings of Power, bro. But at least in Rings of Power, I felt like I was in another world. The whole time I watched it. When I watch this, I feel like I got one leg in Southern California and one leg in like Scotland or something. I'm not, I can't quite figure it out. <laughs> we got super chat from John Burns. Burns. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Old art, old artist. That's not very good. Kanye changed his name to Ye. Is it Ye or Ye? It's Ye. So shouldn't it have like one of those like little squiggly lines above the? No, his name's Kanye. I understand so that, just, but if just spelling it correctly, like this is spelled ye, 
In well, order for it to be yay, yeah. it shouldn't it be one of those little lines above the E? Well, shouldn't Kanye also have a line over the E? I don't know. I don't know. Well, he doesn't for whatever reason, so yeah. It's stupid, though, because it spells ye. <laughs> By the way, there is no word called ye either, so. Mm, whatever. The English vernacular. Now, you go back to old English, you can get ye old road, so. Okay, whatever. Um, he, fin- he goes on to say, he should have changed it to the artist formerly known as he's not an artist. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So when the, when Prince changed, and this is off topic, when the Prince changed his name to the artist formerly known as Prince, right, and it was like a symbol, didn't he do that to like get out of contracts and yeah. stuff? That's a hundred percent why he changed his name. Right. He so was he wasn't doing contract. it to be like weird. weird. He was right. trying to like screw right. over the music industry that owned all of his masters and all that, right? That's exactly what it was. Right. I think a lot of people didn't know that though. Now, they were like, he's but just a Kanye weird may also be doing the same thing. Someone said that too. Someone said that he just wants to get out of all of his contracts. Yeah, but the problem is, is the way he's getting out of all of his contracts, <laughs> nobody may ever give him more contracts later. But anyways, we're talking about Willow. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. That's not, the way you get out of your contracts is not saying you like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to like invoke the name of the mustached helmeted guy from World War II. That's the that wrong way to do way. it, yo. Or yay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> okay, back to Willow. All right. Um, no, you're totally right. My first criticism, too, is this um, assault curus. Is that what it's called? A curus, yeah. It's funny because it, it actually resembles an item, like, to a T. It resembles an item in in Dota, in a game, a video game called Dota. It's real popular. Yeah, we've um, never heard of that before. What are we doing? <laughs> you always, every time you talk about Dota, you, like, describe, like, you say, Dota, it's a video game. It's like... Everyone who knows you knows that you. Yeah, but are people Dota. that might watch this might not know what Dota is. Look so it up, guys. D- look it up. Dota is a it's a defense of the ancients. It's a it's a video game. It's been around for a very very long time. Anyway, there's an item in the game that you can purchase for your character, and it's called an assault. It's what you'll find Brian doing when mm-hmm. he's able to at some point in the future. Yeah. In this, yeah, when in not the future. Working. I haven't played for like a long time. Yeah. Um. Anyways, there's an item in the game called an assault curus. And it's funny because I'm looking at this, 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 uh, and it looks exactly like, and, and even this, um, this little like device that she uses to key it, it's the same color and it has the, I mean, it's almost like someone. I was someone, confused as to whether these characters were boys or girls. Yeah, I, I didn't know what out. gender this character was. I thought uh, it's like this character beard, was related to the other character. Kind of looks feminine. Was the other character a woman? Like the one, if you back it up like a second, is that a is that a man? See, I'm just confused. I can't tell whether these the, the gender of either one of these because you just said woman. So is I know I thought he, I thought this character was related to the woman from from the present time, played by the actor I, I don't like whatever her name is. I don't. I mean, the hair kind of looks like it, but this device is interesting because it's infused with some sort of energy where. You have to be good in order to wear it. Yeah, and it's funny because I feel like they really borrowed a lot from the lore. Either they borrowed it from Dota or they borrowed it from the lore that Dota borrowed it for, from. Because they had the same thing. They called it infused. And it, like, you have to, like... It's very interesting. Um, it looks the same, has the same vibe, has the same color scheme. I mean, that's cool that they borrowed it from that. I mean, that, at least that's fantasy-ish. I mean, the whole lore of this thing was cool. It wasn't bad to me. Yeah, but I don't quite understand it, though. That My complaint is not the, that they borrowed it. It's that I don't understand it. From my perspective, I thought that she or he or whatever made it so that it was only for this person. But from what we're it's gathered... Sh- oh, no, yeah. It's for anybody who's good. Anybody who's good can wear it. Right, yeah. But that's not what they say in this scene. I thought they did say no, that. No, Borman says something like that. But in oh, this it, scene, it was key. He was to the this one p- saying it, though. What? He's telling the story while they showed us this. Oh, then he Borman. changed his mind. Oh, okay, I don't know. Well, he said it's a shield, right? We know that. And that's what he was out doing with Mad Mardigan. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes, he was looking for the AC. I mean, the right. caress. All right. Super Cat from John Burns, the last good CW show. 
Riverdale. <laughs> I was it comment, really? Brian? Comment. He, he, I think he's being facetious. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw Riverdale. I would not say last good CW show. show? <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> I mean, so honestly, Sabrina was the last good CW show, but it wasn't played on CW. The Flash season one. That's it. I think Sabrina was good. Made by the same people. Uh, just it was on Netflix. All right. Anyways, watched. back to this. So an, an, another complaint I have. So you're saying it's good. It's for good people in general, not for okay. Yes. <clears throat> Fine. Maybe I missed that. But then when he's telling this epic tale, she cuts him off, and she's like, oh, "Bro, TLDR, <laughs> basically." Yeah. So that was like the same thing. And then he goes on to say, "Oh, you young people today." This was like this it was supposed to be a joke against our current youth culture, kind of, mm-hmm. and like what old people would say, which. Would be funny maybe in certain situations, but the fact that this show is already so closely related to like Southern California speak in so many ways, it just makes it a little more, it solidifies that terrible feeling. Also, is Borman that old? Not to me, but then again, I think we're probably much older than him. I don't, <laughs> I think that we are much now with Mad Mardigan. Mad Mardigan has to be what in his 40s, right? I guess. I guess, I guess Mad Morgan must have been like our age then. Well, he has to be, yeah. Mad Morgan has to be now in his 50s or 60s. No, no, it's only been 15 years. Someone did no, the math for no, us. No, they figured it out. The, the moons, somebody told us about the moon cycle. It's actually been the, the, the normal amount of time we expected. Well, then how are these people only like in their early 20s? All right, whatever. Oh, my God. I hate this so Dude, much. D- don't try to figure it out right now because it's... That is a good point. This doesn't this doesn't add up. Um, yeah, the, the last good C- really CW weird. show, I believe, I agree with Jeremy Snyder. Supernatural, I miss that show so much. Oh yeah, forgot about that one. All right. Um, yeah. So whatever. Uh, I do she like Borman's character. Her dad. What's that? She wants to hear about her dad, and he's like dragging it out. Right. He was telling a story though. Like, come on. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the princess is pretty annoying. Yeah, she is. She is, and she even gets more annoying as the episode goes when she's arguing with um, Jade. Jade. And Jade, like Jade had to protect her. I don't need your protecting. You know, and like, uh, come on. Yeah, come on. She's, 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 she's wearing on me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Kit. Rough. Princess Kit. Kit. Yeah, so uh, she's not great. Who, who ironically, her... Uh, her actual like head and shoulder shots make her look like an actual princess. And then uh, the, the character in this show has a very almost like her. I mean, any haircut can work, but her whole attitude has this whole, like, you know, non princessy feel about her, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, she doesn't seem like a princess to me. She seems like she doesn't. Yeah, I feel. I feel. I, I'm pretty sure I've been waited on by her at like a TGI Fridays. <laughs> I'm not trying to it's be rude. Not you, it's me. I'm having a bad day. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then um, uh, Jade finds this guy capturing a Laura. Remember, he's possessed now with whatever. And I, you're gonna have to. Spirit. You're gonna have to. When we get to the end of this, you're gonna have to tell me exactly how he became unpossessed because. I think it was a temporary thing, because of of Willow's magic, because it was coming back. That's why she had to kill him. I see. Oh, spoilers, guys. My my bad. Uh, so he's taking the princess. He tries to convince her that she, you know, whatever. She figures something's a monk. Um, uh, is something's going on. Mm-hmm. Willow doesn't use his magic very much. There's a good reason for it, though. Is that a real reason, or has he actually lost it? No, I think he has a limited amount of magic, which actually makes sense. I mean, it's like like in D&D, you know, wizards can't just use magic all the time when they want to. Yeah, you yeah. know, you got to, like, study, and, and it takes, you got to get it back. So seems like Willow might have a limited amount of, mu- of, of, of magic left, which is part of the reasons why he's moved his, uh, his people underground. They talk about that in this episode. It's almost and like he- mana. Yeah, kind of, except he's not maybe getting it back. He has like a finite maybe amount of mana, and he's not regenerating his mana properly. That's what it seems like, yeah. <clears throat> and, Interesting. Uh, but, I mean, we do get to see some cool magic this time, at least from him. We do. 
Yeah, we do. I like that idea. Though. Not... Go What's ahead. That? No, go ahead. I was going to move on to the next. I was going to say I like the idea that there's a finite amount, and he's got to like recharge, and he hasn't recharged. Maybe. I mean, I I, I feel like the way he's talking about it, he's got to save it for the big fight. Means that he's can't get it back. Like this is a one time shot. Whatever he's got left in the tank. Interesting. You know. This character is not uh, as annoying as as the other as Kit's character is. This character is actually not. I, mean, I know this is the one you were concerned about, right? But this is one isn't bugging me. You know, um, I actually don't dislike this character. Um, she's not come across as unlikable. Uh, she hasn't quite convinced me that she's special, but um, but she's definitely got a lot of emotional attachments to like this this guy that she's about to address here raised her. He's the one who's helping her become a knight. Right. You know, so this is like, you know, what's up? So, yeah, right. so they're like, they're like family. Yeah, they're family. So Which this, makes his betrayal uh, oh, so much more, you know, hardcore. And, and I think uh, they probably failed here. Um, I know we don't do upvotes and downvotes for this, I guess, but um, this would be a big downvote for me because I feel like if your dad was like turning on you all of a sudden, you would definitely be a little more emotionally. It, it would be more impact. I had to be reminded that they were family at the end of this episode, at the end right. of the episode. That's I had forgotten. So they're, so they're, they, they lost me on that. Yeah. They didn't make you know? a very clear connection in the first two episodes. That's right. I mean, we got that one moment where she was leaving and he was like telling her, you know, you're going to do this and, um, you know, about the night thing. And then she left. It just didn't, I didn't feel very connected. I didn't feel like they had a connection. Like she should have saw him right now and would have been like, you know, a little more excited to see him or like something. Yeah. Hey, give Jerry, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me a hug or something. I don't know. This little guy right here is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He is good. Um, he's Silas and, uh, he's kind of the comic relief and Willow sidekick. But, uh, yeah, he won't be around much longer. He will not be around much longer. <laughs> They're just going to c- get rid of all the people. Like, oh, I like, like this character. Oh, <laughs> you mean you like this character? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. The only people that, are, that have plot armor are the characters you don't like. That all speak like that one substitute teacher that told you your kid needs to brush her teeth more. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> like, she was eating a tuna sandwich, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right. <laughs> Archmage Freyla. Oh, my God. You can't just call him little. Hashtag cancel Brian. <laughs> oh, my bad. I meant... I meant uh, Small in stature. Oh, uh, small, yeah, small in stature. Uh, yeah, big uh, and hard. Vertically and uh, challenged. <laughs> yeah, that's honest. That's fact. <laughs> Vert- <laughs> vertically challenged. Unless it's unless nobody's vertically challenged, and everybody's at the perfect right height that they should be for their whole life. I'm horizontally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> You're vertically challenged to me. That's Anyways, true. I'm like a yeah. foot shorter than Shane. No, not that much, but yeah. Feels that way. I'm like, hey, Shane! <laughs> <laughs> so the the, the, the the thing get stuck in the mud yet? Uh, it's about to be. Here we go. Oh, yeah, not yet. Obviously, they're still going. <laughs> okay, this is this is weird. So the crone is, uh, is spinning some magic or something. I don't know. Do you know what this thing is? It's like a barrier. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on either. It's like and bad magic ex- expanding. That's one another thing too. Like, I would like to know how how magic works in this universe because what I'm the conclusion I'm drawing is that Willow has a finite amount of said magic, but it seems like the people that attacked um, uh, the city didn't have a finite amount of magic. They were using it, you know, <laughs> to like travel three feet to their horse like (laughs) yeah the crone seems to have like unending magic ability right so like is it specific to willow because because of his because of what he is or is he doing something wrong i don't know i I need to know i need more information 
Well, some people are in- inherently have it, I guess. Like Alora, D- Alora has it, right? I guess the crone has it. Maybe he had to like study hard to get it or something. You know what I mean? Because mm. Willow, well, you got to remember in the movie, he was a magician. He wasn't, you know what I mean? He he wanted to be. Yeah. And that, that goes back to the movie. Like, didn't didn't he use use his wand like like 150 times? Well, he was young, you know, he had a lot in the tank. You know, <laughs> and he thought he was only gonna have to do this fight once, but apparently it's 2022 and they're back. So I would like no I like more information on that. I like the idea of finite magic. I like I don't like that everyone's everyone being overpowered. Like they like there being like clear rules on on what you're capable of. But I would like that yeah. those rules to apply to everyone. We should write that movie or that show. Like seriously, like an entire civil you know, entire culture of magic users that are born with a certain amount and like this whole strategy is to save your magic for certain things and the way people have to use it. Oh, that's a like great a idea. Tank. Yeah. That cool. Like a limited mana pool. Yeah, we should we should write a story for that. Let's I like that. that. I like that a lot. All right. Um yeah, so the and they're called the crone, is that correct? The, the 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 bad lady the from the original movie as well is the crone. Yeah, every time they say that, I'm like, my mind thinks about like Crohn's disease, and that's all <laughs> I can think of now. <laughs> Do you have cold Crohn's disease or ultra colitis or whatever the heck it's called? Um, you need this medicine. Yeah, this is like what if this is just one long ad for like <laughs> for like PharmaTech? At the very end, it's like an ad for like. Some new medicine. <laughs> he uses Rolaids to defeat the crones. <laughs> um, hey, so she unties herself or cuts herself off, or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, oh, uh oh, oh, oh!" This was, is so dumb. This was super I mean, dumb. I gotta tell you, this whole damn thing is dumb. What happens from the moment she gets loose? A that she gets loose. B that she runs into a forest and it's like dark. Go ahead, go ahead, and go forward. Why not? Yeah, it's. Dumb, dumb, dumb. So her. she somehow chops herself of loose, and she falls off the horse, and then they she can't makes catch run. her, of course. Huh? They can't catch her, of course. She's too fast. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, the teenager uh, <laughs> running in the open field um, can't be caught by the three guys on horseback. On a horse, on they're on horses. Shane, I I get it. How long but does it take them? Oh, remember like, oh, in the oh. first. Oh, the prince is in the got first away. episode. Remember, you couldn't figure out how she got through the portal before they did. Remember, she was like gone. Maybe she's got like fast travel or something going on here. Oh god. Oh, no no more fast travel. Like let's stop doing that, please. No. I mean, in, you know. She's she's special, but what's dumb is what happens next. Well, so What's they really stop dumb. they stop and they like look back they're like Oh no, the princess has escaped. <laughs> yeah, that's You sound like Obama had had attacked the princess. We will go her. after her. Uh, 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 but wait, but first, uh, 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 let me, let's get some coffee and relax. <laughs> right. Apparently they just like take a break and allow her well, to run. You know why, right? And she force so boots. <laughs> I'm using Dota you, terms now. She's like four steps over the hill. <laughs> you, you know why they did this, right? So hmm. what do we hate most about TV shows? When you use plot to drive the story. Yeah. So, and what they did here is they wanted her to do something that these guys couldn't be around for the conversation. So they created a situation in which she could, this could happen. And I hate that about shows. And they're Everything clearly following to her. her too, but like, <laughs> they're like, they're so slow. Like wait. she's ran all the way to that clearing in real, look in real life, the horse makes that distance like 17 times faster than she does. Yeah, probably faster than that. So they catch her well before she even gets close to to the tree line. And by the way, the tree line is not like a magical barrier that slows them down. Like, I, I'm sorry, is it because she hit the tree line all of a sudden like, whoa, 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 got to give her a head start now. <laughs> <clears throat> like, I don't get that, man. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, the wheels off. This, uh, this shot was sort of cool. I mean, it was intentionally created so that this can be a screenshot for like the thumbnail on the Disney yeah, plus thing. Like. Definitely, definitely done that way. I mean, it was fine. I mean, you got to have some camaraderie between the characters. Like this is one of those like team building moments. 
you know, and you, you right. do have to create chemistry between all the characters that makes sense. And they haven't done a good job of doing that really yet. So I was okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so they got fixed the wagon and they, they actually start giving Willow a hard time. They're like, I'm not sure. Why don't you just use your magic? <laughs> Well, that's been the whole thing the whole time, right? Right. Super chat from Adam Wolfer, Wolford, Adam Wolford. Um, we all know when wearing a dress, you run faster. Oh, my God. Is that true? Yeah. Well, of course. You don't have the dumb friction of pants yeah. rubbing against your legs to slow you down. So what you're saying is if you were naked, you'd run even faster. You no, know, I would be distracted by something smacking my leg. <laughs> Although when I was a kid, I did. <laughs> Although when I was a kid, I did believe running barefoot, I was faster. And I found out one day running against people with shoes on that that was not the case. Well, actually, technically, running barefoot over... What the... What was that, bro? <laughs> I think a mosquito just landed on my arm. Like, who's in the room with you? That was weird. so weird. Um, I think if you're running barefoot over a specific terrain would be faster. Like, if you have more... Uh, contact with the ground and you can feel what's going on. I could, I could feel, I can see that being a thing. Well, well in an actual running race, so I found out in your socks on asphalt or whatever the heck you run on versus someone with shoes. It's, it's, you're definitely slower. So, All right. Especially the shoes that have the pump up tab. Don't, forget, we didn't have those back in the day. Don't you forget know. if you, if you have the pump on your, yeah. on your, what is it called? Lid lip. What, yep. what is that? On the on on the tongue of your on the shoe. tongue. If you have a, if you have a pump on the tongue of your shoe, this is science. You can pump it up and run faster and jump higher. Absolutely not true. That's science. <laughs> so dumb. Like, where's the air coming from that you're pumping up? Anyways, I, go ahead. I still don't know how those shoes worked. Did, were you just pumping nothing? I don't know. There was like I don't. I still don't. Know. It's a way to charge an extra fifty bucks. That's how you. Do. We need to do like an Air Jordan. Say. You pump the air into the Air Jordan. <laughs> how those shoes with the pump works? Because I want to know. They don't. Well, then there needs to be a class action lawsuit. If I spent a lot of my my youth pumping up the tongue of my shoe. All right. There are no shoes to make you run faster. Now, those people that don't have legs and like have those like metal contraptions that make you like run really fast, like springs, whoop, whoop, you know, those people who, oh, like, yeah, people who don't have a missing a leg, you know, what's, like those guys can run fast, dude. Yeah. So, like, they, you're, you're totally right. Whenever I see the people that have mastered their prosthetics, my first mind is like, oh, I wish I could do that. And then I'm like, oh, wait, I have to lose my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> super chat, Adam Wofford. Why? Yes, you you be like the Flash, super faster. See, there you go. <laughs> pump, 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 pump. <laughs> All you need Look, to mom, do. I'm is... fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. All that right, um, break in humor, which we needed. Yeah, so this is when they have that stupid CW conversation when they're like, "Oh, listen, you I don't." Mean, it you don't have to protect me. And she's like, yeah, I do actually. And she's like, yeah, but I'm better than you. And <laughs> she basically well, it, said it was done badly. Like, yeah, it, it felt weird. It's like, these guys are supposed to be friends or whatever. And it's like, there's supposed to be like this moment where she basically, uh, I guess stabs her in the back by letting her win. Like when they're fighting, <laughs> I don't, I just don't know what the purpose of this was. Yeah. It was stupid. It was really stupid. It, there's no purpose of this conversation. Really? Yeah, it had, it had no purpose. I love it. If well, this review have more tangents than way, Quantum guys. Leap Jewel State. <laughs> what? Possibly. <laughs> oh, so, by the way, this episode didn't have any uh, any gay stuff happening at all. No, no, no overtones. Yeah, I was really disappointed. I mean, but my point is, is like, if they're <laughs> going to forward their relationship, do I mean, I don't know, it was just kind of like weird. There was no point for this conversation, like. Well, I mean that, that and this this uh, retroactively proves my point to last week when I said this relationship wasn't necessary. It didn't add anything to it. So if you're not going to continue to explore their relationship, um, then what's the point of you introducing it? What's the point of introducing anything that you are going to leave just f floating out there? 
Right. Every scene, if you're going to introduce that relationship, you're right. Every scene has to have a little bit of that heaviness in it. That there must be there. Every time you have a scene in anything you do, there needs to be a point to the scene, a consequence, right. a reason for it. And you need to keep the, the audience hanging on the edge of their seat for everything that happens. This happened. You're like, okay, why is this important? And then you're like, oh, it's not. Okay, move on. Right. Like when we built up that whole moment in The Last Jedi, when we're going to hand the lightsaber to Luke Skywalker and you we're built it up for an entire anything. movie. We're like, everyone, everyone's waiting for that moment. And she finally hands Luke Skywalker the lightsaber. Right. <laughs> and he's like, and he throws it away. I could have, that's like the one time I could have punched Ryan Johnson in the face. <laughs> Like for that that thing alone, I just wanted to punch him in the face, and I don't like to punch people in the face ordinarily, but I really wanted to punch him. Why are you wasting our time? <laughs> Why did you do that? Like an entire like the the, the whole point of the, one of the movies was that lightsaber, and it was just like they threw away their own movie. It's, it's so stupid. That was the moment in the scene. That was Ryan Johnson going when he's writing the script. He's like, "How can I make sure I want to let everyone know when they're watching this movie?" I don't give a shit about that last movie. Okay. <laughs> ah, perfect. We'll just have him throw the lightsaber away. There right. you go. Right. Doesn't yeah. work. Doesn't work. Got it. All right. So, um, and they have this long, like long, con- look at this. Jeez. Like, this is a long scene, bro. About nothing. About yeah. nothing. I mean, it's supposed to be about trust and how about I'm protecting you and now we're going to go off on our own separate ways and I'm going to pout about it. It's just a lot of CW stuff going on here. <laughs> and then, of course, off screen, they get the wheel back on the wagon. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're they're all exhausted. Right. Because this issue. I find it hilarious that the big giant guy is exhausted next to the <laughs> three foot five guy who's also exhausted. I don't know. How, how does that even work? <laughs> that was great. Borman brings a lot to the. He does a lot to the show. Yeah, it was really funny. Even the weenie kid here does. Kind of like him too. Yeah, I actually like the weenie kid. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, yeah. I like him. I think I actually like the character, which means he's probably going to die. So rest in peace. Well, or yeah, he's definitely not safe. (laughs) <laughs> but this is dumb, okay? If you go back to just before this, it's like dark. It's overcast. There's this giant swirling oh. evilness power that's like consuming the forest and her running away in it. And then all of a sudden, the next scene she's in. And she's having like an acid daylight. trip or something. See this? Like, she's like, it's weird. And she goes into this clearing where these people are. It's like, look at the sun. Oh. Like, what? So I'm assuming, now listen, as an as a viewer of television, I must now assume that she has gone forth here. Now, what would have been cool is if, like, this was the freaking crone. See, that would have been cool, like, mm-hmm. like, 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 uh, masked or hidden of an agenda right. to try to trick her. Like, that would have been badass. But no, it's just a person who's going to be killed in about five seconds. And that's and it, the crazy part. You're right. My first thought was, okay, these they had. There's a hidden agenda here, right? It, Otherwise. Yeah. A, a cabin, a shining in the middle of the dark, gloomy forest would make no sense. Yeah, it's really poorly done. Like, like they didn't <laughs> consider their scenes, g- p- putting them together, and like they lit it really poorly. Like <laughs> these people are completely unaware that evil, evil is consuming the forest that they live in, and they're just happily drinking their coffee or having their little, their little moment here, whatever the hell's going on. Chopping and of wood. course, they don't believe who she is at first, and then all of a sudden, they instantly do. Oh, yeah, yeah. The second like, she talks about her mark, they're like, oh, okay. It was weird. You're right, too. It's really, yeah, I'm sorry. Yorkshire Geek, this is a good point. I don't know why they're wearing denim. It's very odd. Yeah, it's true. And they're wearing, like, combat boots with, with metal straps. Like, it looks like these guys are from, like, I don't know, Ohio, 1985. Like, <laughs> It is weird. The costuming is strange. And but even even more weirdly is the fact that this this woman uh, is obviously a better swordsman than the trained knight of the queen uh, with her axe. And so she defeats the evil as he when he gets there. But because he's not really dead, he stabs her and kills her. 
Like, what was this buildup? We'll follow you. We'll, we'll, the, to our death. And then she dies. Yeah, this, this was really, this is really a really, a huge waste of time. It was. It was because you introduce these two characters and you go out of your way to go to, to enamor us or at least attempt to enamor us with these two characters. Right. And, and their loyalty and their like bravado and their skill and all that. And then, and even their comic relief. And then you immediately, imme- I'm sorry, I'm not going to, you immediately kill them off, which we're going to get to. And you're right. Their costumes make no sense at all. Like, look, like she's just wearing Levi's, Holmes. Like, that's just, those are just Levi jeans. It's weird, man. I mean, it's just, it totally took me out of the story. I thought if this is like a Mirage, if this is like. I lost Shane. <laughs> if it's like a Mirage, not a Mirage, what am I thinking here? If it's like a uh, illusion. An illusion. Which would have been cool. If it would have been a way to trick her. Maybe they let her get away so that the crone could seduce her. Right. That mm-hmm. would have been fantasy ish good, you know. Yes, but this yes. Or it would have made sense that they let her, that they didn't just catch up with her immediately on their horses. Um, yeah, yeah, jo- yeah. Jonathan Kasdan, this is poor. Explain, please, why this would be the case. Right. You know? That's a good point. Yeah. Why would you, Why would you write this into the scene? This is very amateurish. Yeah, this doesn't work. You're right. You know, it's funny is that you're right. Everything I was complaining about before could have been an empty complaint had these had this been an illusion and not just a complete waste of time. Interesting. All right. Yeah, so it was just a total waste of time. What was the point? And we're going to get back to those characters in a second. Um, let me burn through Maybe this. Maybe for like a second. Yeah. Let me burn through this. Uh, also a waste of time. <laughs> so they go their separate ways. I don't know why. I still don't know why they went their separate ways. I don't way. know why either. But I want, like they're going to look for the ace, the the Kuras, right? Right. They're looking for the shield, which the whole group hasn't talked about yet. By the way, it's not a shield. So it's, it's kind of like weird. A, it's like a breastplate or something, right? Well, he called it a shield. All right. That's what he called it. All right. It could be a shield. It, I mean, it is. It probably acts as a shield, even though it goes into the whatever you know. So, but here's the point: Did the whole group ever talk about? That it was him and her speaking about it separately. Right. You're right. Yeah. So now they're all on the same page. I guess we don't share that with the audience. We don't. We don't. That's not important. Uh, the audience doesn't matter. They just let them figure it out. You know. I don't, uh. And then like and, the, the scene goes from like literally like and remember they're very close to each other in proximity. It's like really really dark and like really really light. It's like, really weird. Like they're yeah, they are right next to each other. They are like, like that is a production mistake. There, are, there, are, there are a few. There are at most a few city blocks away from each other, and like you have this and that. Like look at the color grading. Like Jesus, it's completely different. <clears throat> Although that yeah. that that uh, meat stick she's eaten looks delicious. I'm not gonna lie. Somebody's hungry, I'm starving. <laughs> um. All right. And they show the mark, and they're like, we're going to follow you forever until we die with our Levi jeans. And then zombie guy shows up, and they're like, oh, you ain't getting her, boss. I'm like, I don't understand where her accent is. It's so weird. And she gets her axe, and she she defeats the swordsman like, no, big deal. this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Oh, my God, this is dumb. It was she, weird. I mean, yeah. She literally just like, the, but he's undead, so of course it doesn't hurt him. And she just, and he's like, I'm almost, and then she looks back like, yeah, look who I did. And then he just stabs her. <laughs> it's like, come on. She's literally wearing like Levi jeans. This is like stupid. Like, that's, I wonder why this scene doesn't make any sense. It looks like you got like a, a guy, a, a, you know, a lady from like Riverside, California fighting with a knight. What's weird is this actress. She's been in, she's in quite a few things. She's in Ted Lasso and and a few different things. I love her. It's like, Lasso. it's like the reason why they put her here is because like she has some acting clout, and so they gave her a scene. But it's a completely pointless scene, right? Like we already know that that um, that uh, Alara Alara that um, we already know that that Alora is who she is. 
She doesn't need to be convinced. She already knows who she is. She believes it. What is this? Per- what did this person do for her? And right back to gloomy. Yeah, she did nothing. 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 Yeah, you're nothing. right. Nothing. Didn't yeah. forward the character. Didn't forward the story. Did she nothing. She died. She just died for no reason. Okay, and now they go into the gloom. And back into the sure. gloom. Yeah. Only this house is, and she drags the the other lady, who's apparently the other woman was speaking for her because she does not feel the same way. <laughs> she is terrified. We will follow you to our dead. She's like, mm, what? What? Hold what was on. That? Here. I'm um, making coffee. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. All right. Then they go. They go back into the fog of war, which I'm assuming that's what it is because I'm seeing a lot of Dota references right now. <laughs> um. <laughs> And oh, 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 no, the bad guy, zombies, going to show up, and she's going to run. And they're well, like, let's talk about another dumb thing here, okay? Yeah. The lady runs away, who's completely inconsequential to what their goal is, right? And she's already far away. But, like they're going to chase her down and stab her. Right. Like right. she's absolutely no threat, no purpose. It, it means nothing for her just to run away. But right. because she's like, no, let her live, and I will go with you willingly, and then they just kill her. And I'm like. Well, so, you know, and let me let me blow your mind a little more, Shane. I'm pretty sure that lady was running faster and farther than Alara did when she fell off their horse. But they were able to catch her. Good he, call. Very easily. She but, didn't have the, the the speed force boots, dude. She didn't have the force boots, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's really, yeah, really lame. lame uh, yeah, blindness. just murder her real quick. I'm pretty sure that they caught her on foot. They weren't even on their horses. <laughs> no, one one was on his horse. Oh, one was on his horse. All right, he was on his horse. They got her. All right. Um. <laughs> she. There's a scene where she calls Boardman. Now I understand your name, a boar man or whatever. <laughs> like. All right. Uh, like, oh, the writers really got that one. Huh? <laughs> <He's> really... <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking that dad joke. You guys are really stretching there for the jokes, bud. Boar, man, because he's Boar, telling a long man. story. Come on, guys. Who's writing this crap? Come on. <laughs> better than this. Give me a break. Somehow the thing gets caught in the mud again. All right. So we're having a hard time with the wagons. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even. We're supposed to save the, the world, but we can't move a. <laughs> you guys need some more tread on these things man so the whole point of being stuck was to show that willow can't use his magic like that was <sighs> right that's the whole reason the whole reason the, okay so novice writing is when you create situations in stories to prove another point. Right. Like it could come naturally through it. It could have been a simple short conversation, but it had to be this whole drawn out scene. And it's just a waste of time, man. Yep. It is waste of time. <laughs> it is funny seeing the, the, the little people, the Wait, vertically people. challenged folks trying to pull the giant one ton horse. <laughs> oh. Um, it used to be little people, right? That was okay. I don't know what it is now. Okay, hold on a second. I need to look it up. Political correct term. Deja vu right now, dude. For little people. Right? Right. And then watch this thing comes up and says, me, 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 you can't say little people. <laughs> um, you have been canceled. The terms, for, oh, the terms person of short stature, little person, and dwarf are commonly used in the United States to refer to a person like this. So you can actually call him a dwarf? Um, that seems wrong. I mean, no, I mean, no, no. I, let's correct it. It seems right, but like in our current, it sounds right, but in our current uh, climate, it feels like that would be the wrong term. The term you cannot use, and this is good information for everybody, do not use the word midget. That is a that is a highly offensive word to, to people of short that, stature. That have dwarfism, right? Right. But isn't there actual midgets, though? No, that's what I think people just called people that had dwarfism, and they don't like it. Because mm-hmm. if you go back to, yeah, I think that's what it is. So anyways, moving on. We're going to call them little people. <laughs> you had struggled there for and a second. Dwarf. Saw. I still like, I'm still like, where's like the official like little people dwarfism respectability? I don't know. All right. 
Uh, yeah, and this is the whole thing. I can't use my magic. Blah, blah, blah. I'd want to be called a dwarf, dude. If it was me, like, yeah. actually, like, Lord of the Rings dwarf, like, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd be like, call me uh, Humbley or whatever that guy's name is from the Lord of the Rings. Oh, Gimli? Gimli, yeah. All right. Um, they're off looking for the assault curse. They go into, like, this. I guess they hid the curse. So they gave... The... <sighs> They told the only guy they could trust where the where it would be, and I guess this is where it's supposed to be. And it was somebody that her dad and him both knew and trusted that also owned a bar that is no longer there. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. As you can see, the town is no longer together. Yeah, what is that? Is that like a willow trope? Why is it that, that you think you're going to a town and like when you get there, it's gone? <laughs> I think it's a fantasy trope. Like, you know. But in Willow, the movie, they they went to go to a, a castle that was decimated. No one was there. Well, and that must be. They went famous. to a, yeah. Then they went to the island town, and it was decimated. Everyone was gone. Anybody close to the evil. And this thing's close to the evil, remember? So in Willow, though, they, everywhere they went, every single place they went <laughs> where they planned to find someone, it was decimated. <laughs> That's how you keep the story going. You gotta keep walking. Yeah. All right. So they're gonna go down there and find it. Um, I mean, this whole scene was like kind of anticlimactic. I didn't the whole thing about the uh the rat the were rats. The were rats. Um so I had a hard time kind of seeing them. Uh they got glowing eyes or something. I I mean did you notice they that Borman danger? But did you see the part that Borman where he like took the infuser or whatever? No, I missed that part. So, so he, it was Borman, I believe, that was like, he was down there looking for it, and he was like, he found the infuser, what looks like the infuser, and he was like wrapping it up and like start stashing it in this cloak. Oh, he's probably going to be a little bit nefarious here, not say he found it, huh? I don't know, I guess. Well, he's obviously supposed to be like a somewhat of a villain. Oh, anti-hero. Or anti-hero, and so he's got to do anti-hero things. Now, this whole thing is lame. It's such a so they want to get her to go up these steps, right? Right. And she's like, no, I'm not going. I'm the best. This is where she's like, says the word, like, I'm going to kick your ass or something like that. I'm like, okay. this. And then, of course, he's like, okay, let me see it. Let me see your big spell. <laughs> of course, she can't do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, although she did touch the guy, and there was some sort of magic came off yeah, her fingers. some kind of passive magic that happened it wasn't she didn't think of it it wasn't her that did it it was like someone singing you know, on passive spell right so i don't even know what this scene was supposed <laughs> it looked to be. by the way it looked exactly like lincoln's fear from dota <laughs> just to be clear <laughs> same well, exact so, animation so what was the purpose of this scene the, you know what the purpose of the scene was the purpose of this scene was to delay things so that her friend she could show up All right that's what it was and so the once again another scene is created to move the plot forward. Yeah, why not just have his friends show up? Right. You don't need to create this song and dance. Oh, I know why. Because you're only at uh 29 <laughs> minutes and you need at least 45 minutes to please the Disney overlords. That's what it is. Could this show I mean, yeah, but I mean, Willow was a movie. Um, there's essentially the same type of story unfolding here, kind of similar, right? But they're doing it over the course of Eight hours, mm-hmm. right? You know, it's just, yeah, this stuff mm. should have just made another movie, guys. So laughing at them, her friends show up and they're gonna fight. Everybody shows up, they're gonna do their thing. I thought that was really cool. That's I mean, there's cool. some cool stuff here. Yeah. They're losing, you know. Um, good makeup. Yeah, um, but the the whole point of this and the whole good thing here that happened is. We finally see Willow use magic. Right. Because they basically do, and I don't think it's appropriate to say this if it was a joke, but they literally threw a dwarf (laughs) across the way into a wall. (laughs) If I intended for that to be a joke, it would be wrong. (laughs) Because back in the day, there was a thing called dwarf tossing, remember? Yeah, I got remember. You remember? It was like in uh, movies or something, that, remember? That there was uh, Whoop of Wall Street. <laughs> they, was it in that? They were tossing the little people, and they're they paying them tons of money to, like, 
play like uh, darts with, with little people. So this is the first thing that came to my mind when he got <clears throat> chucked across the courtyard and into a wall. And this is the thing that finally gets Willow to be like, oh, now I'm mad. They just mess. They just jacked up his friend. And, uh, and now he's going to finally use magic. But there's going to be a consequence. You can feel it coming. But before that happens, back to the pit. Oh, are they still in the pit? They're still in the pit. Like, there's the device. Oh, there's the there it is. There's the device. Yep, you're imbued right. Infuser, imbued or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and he he finds it, and he, like, wraps it up and, like, stashes it in his cloak. And that's Well, remember, he, he only tells one-third of everything the truth, there. apparently. That's true. Okay. And there's the were-rat. <laughs> I mean, okay. 1985 graphics right there. <laughs> It's, I wasn't terribly impressed with this. No, that's, but, right. that's pretty on brand. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it was like, it's hard to tell. This episode was pretty dark. It was hard to see things clearly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she, she kills the wear rat. I like how she acts like it's like a huge achievement. <laughs> you know, it, it gave her some confidence. Maybe that was, she was uh, shook after her friend told her, you're not a very good fighter. <laughs> I was kind of jacked up thing. Yeah. I feel like I could have killed that thing with like my bare hands, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hunted it across the across yeah. The... I would have just kicked it across the room and it would have died. And... <laughs> <laughs> would have died into the wall. Um. All right, but back to this. Oh man, this has been a long time in that pit, don't you? Yeah, and then a whole bunch of yeah. A lot yeah. of were rats. Like you killed our friend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I still like the little weasel guy. He's great. Yeah, he's been good. He's he, he's playing a different kind of character. Um, there's some consequence here for him. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he's going to be like a secret magic user, too. Well, he's in trouble right now, but. All right. Don't so they're know. fighting and they're losing. And I We're guess like, I was really yeah! early. I was really early on the dwarf toss. Sorry. Is that... <laughs> dwarf... <laughs> Why would you say it like that? What? I mean, they literally, they toss him across the <laughs> thing into the wall. What else am I supposed to call it? We just agreed that we're calling them dwarfs. He tossed him. I don't know how else to say this. He was... They, they dwarf tossed him, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, that's that's <laughs> that's accurate. No, <laughs> right? Do we get the? Do we get to see the toss? Yeah, here's the here's the. <laughs> we should show it. I mean, just because we want to make sure. Oh, some magic, and this was cool because we we were like, we really do want to see Willow do some magic. So this right. is like the coolest part of the whole episode. And he like burns the magic out of him or whatever. I guess the evil out. He pushes the evil out at least temporarily. Which I'm like, dang, to use up that much magic and like not destroy the, the evil there. That's kind of, of a bummer. Yeah, I know. Like you, you use all this magic and it's like super temporary. It wasn't even like <laughs> right. a couple it's of like, hours, dang. dude. So what do you think you're going to do against the crone? He's like saving it for the crone. It's like, nah, you're. Your, your magic's not going to work. He's saving it all. He's saving whatever's left, apparently. All right. Um, yeah, so his dwarf friend is pretty hurt. So much. It's all right. I'll use my yeah, magic. What they needed is they needed some, as somebody pointed out in the chat here, they needed some Velcro on that wall to catch it. <laughs> so he wouldn't have been so injured. <laughs> Stop, man. Um... So right. he offers to use his magic to heal him, and he's like, no, save it. Well, you already, he already used a bunch of magic. Yeah, he might as well. I, mean, I would have saved him. I would have been like, look, obviously the crone and me, I'm going to lose. So. <laughs> right. I'm well, yeah, not your winning life. this fight. Like, at least I have my buddy. Right. All right. So, yeah, I thought, see, that was sort of necessary, too. They, they just want to get rid of another character because, like, they, they have to thin the herd here. They do. Too many people, it needs to peel down. The right. problem is, I mean, he is like the logical one to go, but I was enjoying him. Yeah, that's, I was I was enjoying him too. Um, And then uh, voila, 
This is this is where we're at. And then they have a heartfelt happened? moment. She's like, "You must protect the princess." Blah blah blah. Oh yeah, yeah. So he that's that heartfelt moment between that. Now it reminded me. Oh, that's her, like her dad. Uh, that's right. They're like, like really I would, close. That's right. I'd be crushed right now. You and know. Now and so then, yeah. wait. Here's the dumb thing. Like she's like, he's like, kill me, right? Take it was free me, set me free. And she's like, no. And he's like, you have to be the one to do it. And I'm like, why the hell does she have to be the one yeah. to do it? Can't one of those other guys kill her dad? I mean, why has she got to kill her dad? Right. I'd be like, hey, you know what, man? Um, I love you. Uh, I know you're going to die. So, you know, good luck in the afterlife. I'm going to give this sword here to literally anyone else in the party. Anybody else that's not going to be emotionally <clears throat> damaged as a result of killing your father. Right. It's so odd. It's so odd. It, it's just, you know, once again, they want to create this tension, the drama. They want to, like, really amp it up. But it's not believable because it's not really what would have accurately happened. Shane, now, if he had started like attacking her because the evil was coming back and she different. had to kill him, that would have been cool. Yeah. But the writers didn't get that far. Right. I want to make it real clear. If I remember on life support, Shane, and everyone's saying like, Shane, you got to pull the plug. I want to make it really clear right now. Okay. Do not pull the plug. Got um, it. I don't care if I'm brain dead or in a coma. If my body is still alive and there's still a 3% chance, at least, of me coming back, let the taxpayers pay for it. That's all I'm saying. Got it. Okay, and you got it. And I will really find clear. Willow. I don't, as he wanted his daughter, I don't want you to actually kill me. Okay, I and I will, I will find Willow, and I will force him to use the rest of his magic yes. to heal you. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I'll be like, nah, you listen, from your phone. Heal my, heal my brother. Or I will toss you out the window. <laughs> another toss happening here in a second. I mean, come on. They put it in the story. We're only yeah, saying we're what's happening. They, literally, yeah. what else is anybody going to think when this guy is launched like 400 feet across? I mean, come on. This is a sad moment. Like, you know, I, I do like Borman character. What happened to Borman? He was carrying the little guy. Oh, yeah. I can't really see what's going on here. Is that the just the high seas version? Is that why? No, no. It's the high seas dark. version high, very high quality. It's just dark scene. It's it was too dark. Yeah, the whole, I was like, the whole, I had a hard time seeing things. The only parts that weren't dark were the parts that made no sense. <laughs> um, all right, so now they're gonna go to that special city. And this is what you hear, like, yeah, you... okay, another dumb thing, really quick, please. Yeah. So they're trying to take her up the stairs to take her to that evil place. Uh huh. And they they, <laughs> so then they go up the stairs, like they. That's not where they're supposed to be going. They're supposed to be going to that other city, right? Right. That's where the crone is, I think. Um, so why did they go up the go up the stairs? Right. Yeah. 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 So she wouldn't go up the stairs with the bad guys, um, but now that the bad guys have been defeated, they're like, okay, let's go up the stairs. I, I right. I'm like, aren't they supposed to be going someplace else? What did, What am I missing here? Uh, something. You're missing yeah. something. Maybe because then the you prince. get this great shot where it's the city's like in the center of this giant evil vortex, right? And they're having a really hard time. And yeah, it looks like he got he, yeah, he's gonna be possessed now. I forgot about that. Yeah, so he's now you know got the bad in him. Yeah, so really, any character you like, uh, rest in peace. They're gonna save that one. I feel like he has a greater purpose. Yeah, and there's and there's the city. <laughs> now, gonna... That was not their destination. No. And you're Although in... that is where Eric might be. Yeah, the prince is there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you hear like uh, Enter the Sandman playing. Exit. <laughs> like some. It's not. No, it's not that good. Don't give it that much. It's not that good. You got to do it in a. And then they got the She Hulk graphics at the end. Obviously, they ripped off She-Hulk to create some art at the right. end of the show. I was gravely disappointed in this episode. <laughs> Never make fun of small dogs. I don't. I have a small dog. My dog is pregnant, I, actually. I have she, a small dog, too. She's been like, uh, my dog has been like so clingy these last like few days that She's actually sitting right here, and I would pick her up and show you, but she's pregnant, so I don't want to do that. Um, she, like, follows me everywhere. She will sit at my feet. She'll come on the chair. She she will. She, will, she has not left my side this entire week. When I leave, she waits by the door, bro. 
like like a oh. movie dog does. I think it's because she's pregnant. Oh, probably. Oh, the troll. All right, cool. Yeah. So uh, overall thoughts here on the episode. Um. Um. Uh, just just like you know, it wasn't bad or good. It was just sort of there's uh, to me there's a lot of a lot of problems that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, if I'm being honest. And well, I mean, I think we out- outlined it here. It's the same problem that Picard season one had. It's the same problem that all these shows have. And when you look at the guy who, I mean, listen, John, uh, I think it's John Kasdan. I mean, you know, he's the son of, of a more famous Kasdan, right? But this is the same guy who wrote Solo, mm-hmm. right? This is the same guy responsible for the reason Luke Skywalker or the reason Han Solo is named Solo is because he was by himself. <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> um, this guy who wrote Willow is responsible for that. We finally find out why where Han Solo got his name because he was solo as in by himself. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like, first off, I don't even know anyone that ever asked the question. I wonder where Han Solo got his name. It was just his name. Has anyone ever asked that question? Where did Han Solo get his name? No. So you answered a question no one had, a, no one was asking, and you answered it in the worst possible way. Like you didn't add to the story; you literally just attracted from a, from a, from a, a, a character that no one even cared about what his name was in the first place. It's just a waste of time. Yeah, yeah Jonathan Kasdan has now gone on my list of emphony, emphony after this show. I go back and look at he did uh, he did one episode of Freaks and Geeks, five episodes of Dawson's Creek. Uh, in the land of women, the first time solo a Star Wars story, and this, yeah, I'm not I'm not happy with this. So what you're saying is, um, is doomed from the start. I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, I don't know. <sighs> okay, like I could watch this and follow it along. But the problem is it's not good. Right. Like, it's not good. So not. that's a problem. Yeah. Um, there's part, there's scenes that are sort of cool, and it's following a character that we like. Right. And it's in a, it's in a universe we like, and it's technically forwarding us a, a story that we like, love, per se. But it is, it is making seemingly like all the most basic mistakes of of TV and, yeah, I, and, and, yeah. and some of the, and the characters that are unlikable are the characters that are seemingly going to be striving forward while other characters are going to fall behind. Yeah. And I feel like they're doing this. I, I feel like it's a trick. Okay. And I'm starting to believe this now more and more when you start taking old content and you pitch it as if you're giving it to, to the generation that first experienced it so that they can love it again. Mm-hmm but they're really making it for the younger generation. Like this seems to be repeatedly happening over and over and over again. And this willow is a prime example of that is exactly what's going on here. It is a show. They, they lined up in front of us. They got Ron Howard's on board. You know, George Lucas is glad that we're doing it. You know, all this great stuff, but it's not made for you guys. No. So, I mean, if you're going to continue, if you're going to watch willow, um, I would just say, don't expect it to be made for you. Right. What are you going to do? Okay, well, um, that is all. Uh, Let us know what you guys thought about this episode of Willow in the comments section below. And on the way there, please hit the subscribe button and uh, the like button. You know what? Hit all the buttons. And uh, we'll be be back, of course, next week with more Willow. Um, If you're enjoying Willow, let us know. Like, we want to hear if you're enjoying the show, let us know and let us know if we're off the mark. And if we are on the mark, let us know what you think there, too, because, you know, um, we want to cover shows that you guys want to watch, you know. But if you guys are not enjoying this, we're not going to waste our time either. So, right. Yeah. Frankly speaking, like if Willow doesn't if you guys don't care about it, then we're not going to care about it. Yeah. Um, I mean. I it's, mean, for the most yeah. part. I mean, so I guess there's been some things that we really like that other people, other people probably didn't like. But I would say that's another problem, too. Like, it's not bad enough for me to be like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, mm. I'm probably still going to watch it, 
anyways. But would I be watching it like Wednesday night or sometime over the weekend when I'm bored? Yeah, I honestly would not be watching it. So now I wanted to watch it. Now I've seen three episodes. And at this point, I would be done with the show. Mm. So like I would have this would be and not because it's making me angry. It's just because it's not good. You know, and uh, the only reason I might continue to watch it is I can find out what the official thing that happened to Mad Mardigan. That probably would be it. Mm, and right. maybe they, I know they're going to have a, uh, an episode with the brownies. So, I mean, I do get uh, entertainment value out of our reviews because I get to laugh about things with you. Which yeah. Is fun. Yeah. And that's that, that was the worst part of Rings of Power. It's like Rings of Power was there wasn't enough to laugh at. It was just sort of a constant bore fest, you know? Yeah. So it was like it wasn't even fun to review. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, right. that's true. All right, guys. Listen, uh, hit uh, all the buttons and uh, let's move on. <laughs> 